In this video, I want to show you how you can easily highlight your values that are over or under targets using no custom visuals in Power BI. I'm gonna show you how you can create adjustable targets. And I'm also going to show you how you can add dynamic elements like shaded areas on your line charts, as well as colored markers and labels. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So let's get into the demo straight away to not waste time. Here's a Power BI report that I prepared, which has the data sets of the fictional company Northwind, which is a company that sells goods internationally. We have a few tables here, but we won't go through too much about them. It's essentially just a bunch of orders with a bunch of sales. And we have a calendar table for our time intelligence purposes. And what we want to do is obviously to first create this line chart that we want to visualize our sales against. So I've already created a calculated column here, which which calculates the orders multiplying quantity against the unit price. If I just drag this up here, put this into a line chart, and here is the line chart, the sales every month. Now you can see each data point here is different sales. And let's say we want to create a certain target for our monthly sales. And we want to show it as a, as a line or maybe to control the shaded area later. We will first do that by creating a numerical range here. So we're gonna create one here. We're gonna say this is target and leave it as a whole number. Our minimum would be, well, this, let's leave it to 1000 maximum. Let's say we can see we can, maximum is about 150. So we'll just make it 150,000 like this. We want the slicer to increment by a thousand and default will make it whichever 1000. We'll create a slicer to the page so you can see what I'm doing. And if I hit create here, you'll see that as I drag this, the values for the target value change, which we can try to hook up in a constant value here so you can see what it does. So under the analyze your visual, we can add a Y axis constant line and under line, you can change the conditional formatting here, which you can choose to be based on a certain value. Now the value we'll be using is the target value measure that the numeric range parameter generated for us. So if you hit okay, you will see that as I adjust this slicer, the targets change as well. So we're going to use this measure and this slicer as a means to change our targets dynamically. So the first thing that we'll try to do are we'll replace this line chart with a measure. We'll just create one total sales, which is simply just sum of the sales column. Uh, not that one, this one, here we are. And we are replacing that because we want to use a measure for the next bit of this demo, which is to create the, uh, the shades behind our line chart. So what we first want to try to do is to create a shade of green for any of those data points or any of those months that have gone above our target line, which at the moment is 65,000 pounds. And we can do that by using this new feature called error bars. Now I have covered error bars extensively in how you can use it in different ways in other videos. But for now, we're gonna go through this so you don't really have to go back to those videos. So I'm gonna remove the constant line for now. We're gonna choose and use the error bars here, enable it. And as you can see here, the, the settings for this error bar is applied to our current total sales. 
And from here, we can choose by field or by percentage, absolute by default. And it asks us for an upper bound and lower bound, which we will have to calculate ourselves, which is fine. I mean, that's not very difficult to calculate. So basically what it's saying is that for the error bar, we want you to calculate where you want to shade in your line chart. So we're going to create two separate measures for this uh, bound. So I'm going to start with over a lower bound, which will be the target value simply like this and then the upper bound which is how far the error bar should go up the, the shade which will be based on the maximum or the highest sale that we have in the current context of our line chart so in this case we want to simply just calculate and see what is the highest value um, that is currently available to us so all selected, we're going to choose, use the month context here. And the expression is simply total sales. And so that you don't get confused what I'm doing, I'm going to try to visualize this on a table as well. So if you go to the table, you see here, the total sales for every month, the lower bound is obviously what is the target here. And that changes based on what we select. And the lower bound, oh, sorry, the upper bound is what is the highest value that we have in our line chart, which if you cross reference it with our line chart here is this value, 134,000 pounds. And that is going to be the bound of our green shade. So if we go back to our line chart here. We'll just hide that table for now. Just stick it there. So now if we go back to our line chart here and let's go back to our error bars here, we'll use the upper bound here and the lower bound down here. Now at the moment it's using bars and that's because it's done by default, but the range itself is correct. So what we want to do is instead disable the bars and enable error bands. So this will highlight the area that we have uh, set to as opposed to creating the, the the bars. So from here, we can change the match series, uh, the, the colors, which actually we can change by simply changing the values here. Let's look for the series color. Should be here. So if we, oh no, sorry. So we can change the color here under error band and match series color. It will try to follow what the line color is. You can just disable that and change it to a different color that you like. So I'm going to just choose a random color here, but it will be green. And that's the first shading done, which is great. Now what you will see, if we change the target, the band also changes. So you can see that the shading also changes based on the target that we change here, which is fine. The next thing that I want to do is to add a different shading for the lower targets. So the ones that are beneath our targets that we set here. Now, as you notice, at the moment, we have set the error bar here based on a total sales series, which is what we've created right now. And what we need to do for us to be able to create another error bar is to create another series in our table, which is pretty easy. We'll just create another uh, measure so that we can base and create the error bars on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new measure here. I'm going to name this one total sales two but it could be whatever. And uh, we'll create an if statement first to say if the total sales is less than or equals to target, then I want you to give me the total sales. Else, give me nothing. Which, if I add it now in my y-axis, you'll see that obviously it will skip 
any of the months that is above the target which is what we've set as an if it will just return us nothing but we will adjust this in a second so for now I'm gonna name this one over and I'm gonna name this second one that we've just created under now we're gonna go back and actually we'll start creating our lower bound and upper bound for our second error bar I'm gonna use and try under lower bound which will be min x all selected so it's gonna be exactly the same uh, format as the as our previous reports uh, as our previous measure so simply like this should be let me just check So what is the lowest value here instead of going all the way down to zero the the lower bound and then obviously the upper bound is going to be simply just the target value so now if we go to error bars down here and instead of selecting over we now select under we hit enable we use the new measures that we've created so upper bound here lower bound here and then the same thing as before we will disable bars and enable the bands now disable match series color and we'll use red here to shade red and that pretty much shades the background for our line charts quite easily and as you can see dynamically changes based on what we select here as a target now it looks a little bit funny here and that's because obviously we have this second series bar which doesn't quite make sense and the reason that we've added it is to simply add another shading in our visual but that doesn't mean that we can't use it for something else so for example let's say we want to add markers to our line chart and let's say we want uh, any months that are over our targets to be green and any that are under will be red and because we have two different series now this means that we can create some conditional formatting without creating any more extra code so we can just format uh, use the formatting options to add those uh, different visuals so let's say first of all let's turn on the markers for both of them for you can choose the series here let's say for over markers you can choose the color to something else let's say let's change it to green and for under we want to change the color to red so that's pretty easy right the next thing is I want to change the lines themselves so at the moment we have all of the lines showing but because the under the second series that we created we don't really want to see that we can select that series and the stroke width you can change that to zero so that will essentially hide that stroke for that second series and you only just see the one which is the one that you're familiar with so we'll just change the over one change the color to something else like a black and that's pretty much it so obviously just clean up a few things like remove certain things like the legends because we don't need that and perhaps even the tooltips on your error bars you might want to just remove that just because it will be confusing for your users just want to see the values and let's say you want to maybe add data labels that's also pretty easy so under data labels you just enable that and because again you have two different series here you can have different options for different series so let's say you just want to highlight the ones that are under your target so if you select over here you disable the data labels for those that are over your target and then everything that is on under we can change those values and, and, and change the font themselves to be synced with the markers themselves so change the color to red and as you can see if I change the target 
the values and the data labels that are showing also changes, which is great. What's even cooler, and because obviously we have this dynamic element, if I add a slicer for different categories, let's say, if I change it to beverages, so you can see that the area also changes based on uh, the target, but the target has left to 72,000. So if we adjust that, it also adjusts based on our selection. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how easy it is for you to create shades and create an adjustable target for your line charts in Power BI. Thanks for watching, as usual. Give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so I have to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.